We've talked about starter ships for Star Citizen on this channel before, but they only get you so far. The next step up offers more ship interior space, better living quarters, new game features, and a lot more opportunity. But they cost more, and the options are wide ranging. So today I'm going to present you with some of the best secondary ships you can get, and hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a better idea of your first major upgrade. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. First, we should define what we're looking at today. Your second ship can be anything, really, but there are some more common choices. Things to consider are usually price in-game or out, multi-crew capabilities, specialties such as a fighter or a miner, and size. The second ship question is heavily based on personal preference, and the fact is there's no right answer in a game with constantly changing aspects and a skill-based system. Our choices today will vary quite a bit in these criteria I've listed, but I'll try to keep them general and around or less than 2 million in-game credits. I won't cover every ship you might be considering, but these will give you a good selection to start with, starting from most affordable to most expensive. What's good to remember though when looking for these ships is that, just like starter ships, they're all going to have their own advantages and disadvantages that should have you considering keeping a ship permanently. Size is not the determiner of usefulness in this game, and second ships can be quite surprising. So let's jump in and see what's on offer. First up is a ship that many people actually choose as their very first starter ship. But for those of you who took my advice from my own new player guides and started with the simple Aurora or Mustang starter ship, this is a very accessible second ship that you can earn within days for only 785,000 UEs, or rent within a few hours for a small sum. With this advanced starter ship, you'll be able to defend yourself adequately against other ships of the same class, with two size 3 hardpoints and one size 4 hardpoint. You'll have plenty of space for courier missions, which are great for seeing the various locations in the game while making a little money. In addition to courier opportunities, you'll also be able to purchase your own cargo to haul for some money, about 9 SCU of it. Not enough to make good money from, but enough to make a difference in group missions and looting trips, especially with the upcoming cargo refactor allowing players to actually pack their ships with whatever they want. Outside of the numbers though, this ship is just an amazing all-arounder for the new player. I know players who have been in the game for years who still rock this ship. It has decent guns, living quarters to log on and off with, space for cargo and even the occasional hovercraft you use for ground missions, and a pretty sleek look. Pulling some inspiration from the US Space Shuttle, it's often called the Space Penguin, and you'll hear from many players that this is a solid first or second ship in Star Citizen. There are a few Avenger models that you might enjoy as your second ship, but the Avenger Titan is my first recommendation. The Nomad from Consolidated Outland is called the pickup truck of the verse, and for good reason. You can see immediately that it has a pretty unorthodox design, very monolithic and geometric, but there's a lot of usefulness packed into this small ship. At 27 meters in length, the Nomad is only 5 meters longer than the Avenger Titan, but it manages to reward you with almost 3 times the cargo space. It does come with a drawback though, the unique design lends itself to an exterior cargo bay. While that may not seem like a big deal, it brings with it some future complications. For one, greedy citizens will have an easier time robbing you on the ground or in transit once cargo has been physicalized. It also means that the ship will actually take less time to load and unload than other ships of the same size, as you'll be able to get the boxes on and off of the platform faster than you'd be able to put them in a ship. But you won't be able to access your cargo easily, which can be a problem when you need to ditch or retrieve something quickly in the main cabin. It of course also means you get an easy transport for your small vehicle when you're taking on a new mission. The ship also offers superior weaponry with 3 size 3 hardpoints and 2 size 4s. But weapons aren't everything. This unique ship also offers some rare perks like the hovering landing mode, which does make it easier to land on rough surfaces. 
You also get a size 1 utility mount which can be used to mount a tractor beam that will help you load and unload boxes quickly. Ship tractor beams aren't in the game as of this video, but in the near future this will be a pretty useful feature to have. And of course, there is an adequate living space with a bed, kitchen, some internal storage that doesn't work yet, and a desk. A small home. It's not the prettiest ship. Some may even liken it to the Asp in Elite Dangerous, something I cover in my Lookalike Ships video. But at a little less than a million UEs, this is a solid ship with enough functionality to make it a great choice for any budding cargo hauler looking for a truck. Even more than the Nomad, the Drake Interplanetary Cutlass Black is the home away from home you've been looking for. If there is a ship manufacturer in-game that really sells the atmosphere in their ships, it's Drake. If you want a raggedy ship that gets the job done, the Cutlass Black is your ship. The most obvious improvement in the ship being the space. The ship clocks in at almost 38 meters long, granting you some extra space for a total of 46 SCU of storage. That's enough to actually start making a little money with. You also have a wide loading ramp, which will make it much easier to pack multiple vehicles into the vehicle bay, and doors on either side of the ship, which open to allow for easy loading, unloading, entry, and exit in zero G. And just like the Nomad, this ship has a tractor beam utility mount in the back that you'll eventually be able to utilize. In terms of weaponry, you are equipped with four size 3 weapon hardpoints, a handful of missiles, and two size 3 weapons on a manned turret. That manned turret is new for this list, as the Cutlass Black is the first realistic multi-crew ship we've talked about today. So if you're looking for a ship that is going to give you and your two friends something to do in a group, whether that be cargo hauling or fighting other people, this is your choice. In that regard, you'll have a couple of beds, a kitchenette, plenty of dance space, some internal storage, and some gun racks. No toilet though, you'll have to figure that one out on your own. This is a very popular ship, especially amongst pirates, but it's for a good reason. And while it might not be the best looking, and the thrusters may take a little stretch of the imagination to make sense, at 1,385,000 UEs, the Cutlass Black is really the go-to small multi-crew ship that every citizen should give a chance at least once. Now here's a special case for this list, the only ship close to this size that can get you into the ship mining profession. The Prospector is a fun little ship with an amazing view that acts as the introduction to space mining. This is arguably the most detailed profession in the game right now, allowing you to scan for, crack, extract, and sell raw ore for profit. A good miner can make millions per day doing this, but it does take some time to get you there. And you can always start with ground mining, getting a rock buggy to put into your cutlass, or some hand mining, taking your chances in the caves. But if you're going straight into ships, the Prospector is definitely the most mining focused small ship. But it also contains living quarters, two size one guns, and special cargo pods that can fill up with minerals and at some point in the future detach to be transported or refined. At about 27 meters in length, the ship has enough space inside for all your essentials. There isn't too much to say about this professional starter ship other than that it's the best way to get into ship mining besides crewing up on somebody else's Argo Mole. But at a little over 2 million UEs, this thing's going to make you a ton of money in the long run, allow you to tackle a larger profession with friends, and enjoy some very nice views. Finally, the Freelancer series of ships are all pretty good, which is why I'm going to give you a choice. You can go with the Freelancer Miss, which comes with 36 SCU of cargo and 28 size 3 missiles, but it's going to set you back a little more than 2.5 million UEs. Or you can get the Freelancer Max with 120 SCU of cargo and just 8 missiles, but that'll only be about 2.2 million. There are two other variants, but these are what I would recommend to anybody looking for a good second ship. And your choices with these two variants is really between a combat focused or a cargo focused ship. The thing is, the Max can still defend itself despite lacking the missiles. 
They both have the same guns, and for a cargo hauler, missiles aren't always that valuable. But with 120 SEU of cargo, you'll finally be able to start hauling cargo for good money in some of the more valuable trade routes. As far as a small cargo hauler goes, the Freelancer Max is a great choice due to its multi-crew nature, giving up to four players something to do, its defensibility, its space for a vehicle, and the higher durability than something like a Cutlass. It is a fantastic ship on paper. But it doesn't get the design points from me. I've never been a fan of the long, thin design of the interior on this ship. It feels crowded and less inviting than something like a Cutlass Black, despite them both being about 38 meters long. My own personal gripes aside though, as far as second ships go for the industrial player, you just can't go wrong with a freelancer. Especially the Max. The way these ships are categorized makes them definable by many different terms in the game, but I believe this provides a great overview of what I would call a second ship. While you can buy them for real money at times, these are ships that are relatively accessible in-game, especially when you're able to join and play with an org like my own. But as I also said, there are plenty of ships that you may be interested in that I didn't name here, so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to keep learning about other options as they are developed. And let me know what ships you suggest down below in the comments, plenty of people will be looking for alternatives to these choices. And before you go, make sure to check out my most recent ship giveaway that I started for a 400i with a special green paint. And consider joining my streams to see what other giveaways we're hosting and get additional chances to win that 400i. And as always, if you're a supporter, make sure to check out the homepage of my YouTube channel for the newest exclusive video detailing the return of Hover Mode. I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll catch you in the next.